What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We got Project Blueberry behind me here. We don't have a whole lot of time today, but we're going to see what we can get done. We definitely need to time the engine, get everything situated with that. And we're going to start working on some disassembly on Blueberry over here. Make sure we get all the intercooler piping off, pull a fuse box, computer. Uh, I'm probably going to pull the whole engine harness today already as well. That way we can get that stuff out of our way. After that, it's real easy to drop these things out. I uh, got to undo the lower ball joints for the uh, lower control arms, four subframe bolts, steering rack, uh, a few other odds and ends. And honestly, man, this thing drops completely out of the car. Shifter cables, stuff of that nature. So we're going to go ahead and break out this new timing kit. Uh, make sure we're at uh, top dead center on the exhaust stroke on cylinder one and get this thing timed up. All right, so we made a bit of progress here. We got all the balance shaft stuff taken care of. You can tell right here, all the guides are in. This new uh, oil squirter basically directs oil down to these sprockets right there. Like we said, all the guides are taken care of. You can see the timing work on the crank, 12 o'clock on uh, this front balance shaft, just past six o'clock on this balance shaft, and then obviously water pump doesn't really matter. Uh, we already went ahead and put the uh, front drive on for the uh, timing chain. I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that right now and film the process. So what we got going on here is the first thing you have to do is align the pretty much the unique timing marks to the actual uh, cam phaser right here. Uh, two yellow marks and then the center mark indicates where it needs to go. You do have to get behind. Man, this is gonna be really hard to show. There's it's part of the mold. Yeah, it's part of like the mold of the block. So basically you have to get around like this casting hump that it has in there. It's a little bit tricky. Uh, just be patient, don't force the chain. You don't wanna bind anything up. The next thing we're gonna do is uh, go ahead and throw the center guide on it, which is gonna be this piece right here. And then uh, we'll work on putting on the exhaust phaser and lining everything up down at the bottom. Uh, this motor should be timed very shortly. I said guys, just follow manufacturer's recommendations obviously all this stuff is extremely specific so we're going to work on uh, putting that center one in right now those are kids right here yeah he's got to follow the chain mm -hmm. Got a bolt on them. We're setting up the torque wrench on 89 inch pounds. That's pretty much what all this stuff goes to. You can tell we got the center guide all in here right now. Fitting up real nice. As soon as we get that thing torqued down, we're gonna move on to that exhaust uh, cash bar. Is this one fancy too, then? I want the one with the lights. All right. One of, one of my friends uh, was selling a three ace one the other day, four twenty five a snap one. Four hundred twenty five bucks. I, I almost bought. It. I should have. But we got we, we, we got, got the fastest one in town. We got our prehistoric ones. It's okay. Make sure all of this stuff is. Yep. Since it's all the same torque spec, we just waited until now until it was actually important. We'll go ahead and torque. Pretty it sure they torqued over that. So yeah. So go ahead and grab. A, this guy right there. And you do have to kind of slink it around the, the camera. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and align that diamond mark with the uh, timing mark on the chain itself. There she goes. And we do need to work this cam. Yeah. Way off. A little more. A little more. A uh, hair more. Another a bigger hair. Alright, 
I'm gonna put the camera down for a second because this thing weighs about four pounds and I'm holding the camshaft. <laughs> Give us a second. So that was a little tricky. We ended up uh, putting a mark on the cylinder head itself and lining everything up just to see how much rotation we had to give that intake phaser in order to align the exhaust phaser with the keyway and the crank. But we have uh, this chain guide already pretty much lined up right there, perfect. And the timing mark on the timing crank. mark looks good on the crank for right now. I think that slack will come out right there. The only thing we got left is uh, to go ahead and put on the, the second, uh, last guy. Yeah, chain guide. So this one goes right up in the block. There's one bolt that goes right in here. It rides the edge of the chain. Same thing. These are gonna do uh, 89 inch pounds. Everything's 89 inch pounds. Here. This one should be full. You just don't drop it. This GM did us the favor and put lock that on it. Yeah. This engine was a uh, get a score in the looks department from what it was to what it is now. Yeah, looks like an inboard motor. Looks like an inboard motor. It's got a color to it. Hopefully, this cobalt won't be a boat though. <laughs> it should make like 350. Should be plenty fun in it, I'll probably. You can spray it if not. No, thank you. I'm tied to this car now. Beep. You will need to follow my footsteps if you want to make stupid power. Sell it and get a V8. Exactly. <laughs> Big boy turbo. Alright. Um. The only, to, uh, thing, the only thing we have left to do is take the new timing chain tensioner. So this thing already ships in a, uh, I guess, what is this called? It's, what state would this be in? Not tension? Yeah. <laughs> so we got to put this through the back of the cylinder head right here. We've already verified all our timing marks are correct. The way you get these to release is after they're tightened in, you got to reach in right through here with a pry bar, give it at least an eighth of an inch uh, pressure on it and it'll release right onto the chain. Okay. That's the last thing we got to do right now. Let's go ahead and verify our timing marks one more time. So let's focus. Got the intake cam. Got the exhaust cam. And the line on the crank. So, this looks pretty solid right now. This already took most of the slack out of it. From Germany? Yeah. No, Germans make good stuff. This whole engine is German, by the way, just letting you know. You know why these these, uh, these engines have such high oil capacities? Not unless you tell me. They didn't have a... They, could, they couldn't pass the oil longevity test here in the States. So instead of actually improving... You just throw on, some more oil on, at on it? ...what was affecting it, just increase the oil capacity. If that ain't American, then I don't know what is. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I have no idea what the torque spec is on German. That was actually important. Okay. So, I'm going to look up. Uh, I'm going to look at the torque specification for that timing chain tensioner uh, bolt right there. We'll release that thing, and this thing's timed. We can go ahead and throw the front cover on it. Uh, we're going to throw that old valve cover back on it right now, just in the meantime, so this stuff doesn't get dirty. And then we finally get to start working on Project Bluebird. She'll be running in about an hour. I don't know about all that. I like, I like your enthusiasm though. I mean, if we push her around the shop, she'll be running in about an hour. <laughs> so let me look up this uh, torque spec and we'll get to it. All right, guys, we went ahead and triple checked all the timing marks and we released the tensioner per the specifications. You got to press on it about an eighth of an inch and then it pops out, takes the slack out of the chain. All that seems to be good. Um, Josh is going to touch up the front cover now. Just to get whatever crap's off of here. And uh, looks like we're going to go ahead and seal this up for the last time. We need to rob this off of the other engine. We don't have one of those. We need to put them side by side and go over everything. Because there's a lot of stuff we're missing. Yeah. Luckily that's a complete car, so.
I love dowels. Oh. Make everything too nice. Locate a gasket. It's a nice quality gasket. You can find the front cover gasket. It's here somewhere. Not the front cover gasket. I'm sorry, the front main. Yeah. I know guys, not the most thrilling of content putting on a front <laughs> cover, but like we've said, we promise to bring you guys along and this is part of the process. Cool. Right. Gonna go ahead and throw the bolts in that and we'll bring you guys back in with us when uh, we move on to the next step. All right, so I seem to have misplaced the uh, front cover seal. So we went ahead and took the opportunity right now and uh, just hit the crank pulley with some paint. Get this thing looking a little bit fresher at least. So get all that rust off of there. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, at least the one I've been waiting for, is finally tearing into this thing. We got about an hour left today uh, for what we're gonna be here in the shop doing. So main goal is gonna be get all the tubing out of the way. Oh, that's secured nicely with a zip tie. That's fantastic. Uh, like I said, get all this tubing out of the way. I want to disassemble the fuse box, pull the, the entire engine harness, uh, shifter cables, and a few other odds and ends. Basically making this thing ready to drop out uh, the next time we're here in the shop. So things are going to start progressing really quick with this thing. Danny's working on pulling the uh, dead battery out of the truck. Because I know this car's been parked for uh, the better part of a year and a half at least. Probably coming up on almost two years at this point. So uh, let's set up the camera and we're going to start working on this thing right now. So most of the harness is pulled already. It took about 15 minutes. We're working on the last couple connections. It's a little dark down here. See if I can grab you a light. But uh, we need to work on getting this intercooler pipe out of the way. That way I can go ahead and get the rest of the harness out of there. We've got to do starter, uh, AC compressor, alternators right up there. Other than that, this harness is pretty much ready to pull. Are you pretty happy with how easy these things are to work on? Very simple to work on. <laughs> they anticipated people pulling the motors out of these cars. They anticipated the destruction? Yeah, so I think so. We got about 40 minutes left. We're going to see what we can get done here. I'll update you once we got that harness pulled out of the car completely. All right, guys. So being that this is the first time we have the car in the air, I went ahead and did some investigating to see if we, in fact, could find a hole in the block. We kind of figured, but since we hadn't had the car in the air and the motor was coming out, we really didn't worry about it too much. However, after a little bit of digging, let me see how I can get this in here. I'll mess up show the big you cast. Better focus. <laughs> that, ladies and gentlemen, is what happens. That's actually what it looks like when a rod goes through a block. Well, I'm glad it was actually a motor failure, not just like a head gasket or something stupid. But I mean, we're, we're definitely putting parts in this that it's not gonna fail like that again. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. Well, for these power levels anyways. Yeah, like I said, we're going for 350. More than attainable. Other than that, we have, for the most part, everything on the underside disconnected. Working on these grounds right now. Yeah, they got these really annoying grounds that you can't even see. You think they're a harness and you pull and it ain't gonna go nowhere because it's a ground. But uh, other than that, things are moving right along. All right guys, so we made some major progress on uh, Project Blueberry today. As you can tell right here, got the entire engine harness ripped out. A Little bit funkier than the 2.0s I'm used to, a couple extra grounds and stuff like that. Uh, as you can tell, we got a lot more room to work with here. I still gotta take out this fuse box, but like I said, we are running out of time today. As you can tell, Danny's uh, using our air conditioning unit here. It's hot. It's uh, 820 at night and it's probably, I don't know, at least 95 in here. Anyway, uh, continuing on in the next episode, it's going to be finishing off, pulling out the uh, fuse box. And realistically, guys, we're probably 10 bolts away from getting this thing out of the car. So we're going to go ahead and clean up the shop. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll catch you guys next time.